What's going on guys? It's your boy Brendan from Modern to Me, and today in this tutorial we are going to be learning about strings. What a string is, is uh, I've kind of explained it earlier, it's just a string of text. So it's basically just uh, what we've been doing with this, uh, the system.out.print line, if I can get that typed up here. You, uh, what we've been typing in here in these quotes, like uh, hi, this right here, this is a string that can be represented as a string in, uh, in a variable. And if we get this uh, method, if we can get Eclipse to show us what's going on here, dot print on, you can see that there's all these different methods that they all do the essentially the same thing. They all print something out to the screen. But this one right here, you'll see this is the one we've been using the most. We've also kind of used the, uh, the int one where if you just put a int variable in there, it'll print it out. But this one right here, this we've been passing in strings. So when we've been typing that in quotes, we've been actually creating a string, and you might not have even known that. But you can also represent this as just a variable like we have been with like ints and floats. So to do that, it's the same thing. You just type uh, just type string. And then if we uh, give it a name, let's name it um, just my text. Then you type the equal sign just like always, and then you type your string in the quotes. Uh, let's go hi, uh, not my name is. Let's go hi I, I like potatoes. Okay, and then you always finish it off with a semicolon also. So there you go. We've created our own string. That's all there is to it. But strings are a little different than the variables we've been learning about. We have been learning about. Uh, Ints, floats, and doubles are the main the main variables we've gone over so far. There's also uh, a couple others that we're going to go over later. But these these types, these very basic number types, these are called primitive data types in Java. And pretty much what that means, these are the ones, the very basic data types. They all kind of work the same. They're all kind of stored in memory the same way. And they're, they're just essentially just the basic types. A string does not fall under this category. If you highlight over this, you'll see that it's actually, it gives this thing, and it says java.lang.string, and if you keep reading, it says the string class represents character strings. Class. I've kind of been talking about these classes every so often, and you can see this right here, what our program's running in, is a class. So actually, this right here, we are creating our own class when we are creating a string. Classes work quite a bit differently than uh, regular variables, so it's important to keep in mind that when you're working with the string, it's actually not the same as working with an int. So just keep that in mind when you're working with that, and I'm going to get a little more in-depth with that uh, right now, actually, and later when we learn about classes in just a couple more episodes. Let's just hang tight. Okay, so uh, the string class is actually something uh, called immutable. Once you define a string, you can't uh, just like alter a string. You either have to completely redefine it or uh, create a new string. So I can't. You can't do like the operations that you are able to do with uh, ints or stuff like that. You have to completely alter the uh, the variable itself. So there's some ways around this though. So say we say hi, I like potatoes, and then we realize okay, we actually want to add something on to the end of that. We want to say hi, I like potatoes. Period space I also like bacon so what we can actually do is we can do what we've been doing with uh, with ints where we do the um, plus equal and then type our own string so we can say hi I like potatoes that's already in the my text and what we're gonna add on is uh, let's see uh, I like bacon like I said I also like bacon so I'm going to add that on there need a period grammar Nazi Okay, and save that. And now you might be thinking, wait, I thought you said that you can't do this. I thought you said that you can't uh, alter a variable once, or uh, a string once you create it. But actually, if you remember, we're not, we're not uh, altering it really. What this is equal to is my text equals my text uh, plus the uh, I also like bacon. I'm not going to type that all out, you know what I mean. But we are actually completely redefining it using the old value of my text. So that's kind of how it works. You can't really just directly alter the uh, value like we have been. So uh, let's let's print this out so you can see what I'm kind of talking about. Let's go system dot out dot print print line, and we are going to print out 
my text. Because, after all, like, I've, like I uh, was saying, when we have been using this and just typing in something like, uh, like if I just want to type out Brendan, this is a string right in here. This is, uh, this is a string, yeah, right in here. But if we also just put in a string, uh, a string, it's called an instance with classes. If we put in a string instance, it's the it's the exact same thing. It's gonna look at it's gonna say, okay, we want to print out my text. So it looks and it sees the value of my text is hi, I like potatoes, and it says okay, so it prints that out. So it's the same exact thing really. And then if we just wanna see what happens after we did this plus equals to thing, and we type my text, and if we uh, run this. We'll see right in here that we got our hi I like potatoes and then we saw this new string. This is called uh, uh, concatenating actually. It's kind of a funny word but it's just when you add on another string to a, uh, a previously existing string. So it's pretty handy to be able to do that if you keep on adding something to uh, an existing string variable then you can do that. And it looks kind of weird we, like you're using then a, a mathematical addition sign to work with something that's not a number but it actually works really in a very similar way to the way that the uh, it does with the like the ints and the floats. It works very similarly. So just keep that in mind. It's nothing too crazy. Some other things we can do. Uh, let's say we have this and we keep adding things onto the string and we're getting kind of confused. We're wondering how many characters is our string. We can actually do that by printing that. We can print that out to the screen. We can figure out how many characters our string is, which that can be very useful actually. If there's like a max number of characters for something that you need to set, you can check to see how many it is. So to do that, you type the name of your variable, and then what you do is you hit, you type the dot, and you'll see all these different methods come up. So with classes, I'll get into this later when we learn about classes, but we've been, uh, we've been writing methods, and the method we wrote uh, like um, we, I think we wrote like sum. We wrote sum in another episode, or even main. Main is a method that is located in this class, this first class. So actually, what we could do, I don't. It's not necessarily legal to do this because you're referring to the main method. But if we uh, if we could we could type first class dot, and you'll see our method comes up. So if you want to call a method. And that's in a class, or uh, that's uh, of an instance of a class, you type that dot. So that's what that dot does. That pulls up all the methods in this class, especially um, relevant to the instance of that class. So we'll see we have all these things, and if we scroll down, we'll see length. That's exactly what we want. We can print out the length of my text, and if we do that, we'll see we get 38. So I'm sure if we counted this up, we'd see, okay, yeah, 38 characters are in this string. So that's very handy also just to know how, how long your string is getting so you can be uh, work with that and make sure it's not getting too excessive or if it's too short even. It's really handy to be able to work with that. So I think I'm going uh, to wrap things up this episode and stay tuned because in a couple episodes we're going to be learning about input. I think after the next episode we're going to work a little bit more with strings. Then we're going to be working with input. So keep on watching. I promise you it's going to get even better. I will see you guys later.